Oh, it's a great pleasure to be here. And uh, yesterday, when purchasing the slides, I looked at the poster. It's a very nice poster. And I noticed this well-known quote from the Cezanne above. And I couldn't resist uh, by putting down uh, so the quote that we, we should treat nature with a cylinder sphere and the cone. I could resist by putting a quote from another person many of people here uh, knew, you know, Mandelbrot from his book, uh, the first book on fractals. And uh, it says that the clouds are not spheres, mountains are not cones, uh, and the rivers don't flow in arcs of circles, uh, and neither does lightning go in the straight line. Uh, so it's, <laughs> well, he doesn't have cylinders, maybe something with cylinders. Uh, but uh, I find it's interesting that uh, it's, it's a very nice geometric code, but what most of us do here for a living, it's actually indeed something more uh, than cones and something more, more fractal. And um, what I'll speak about is a, is a model uh, where diffusion limit aggregation, where thousands of paper have written and I have done some and Uber also and it's it's an interesting that mathematically there is essentially one theorem there and uh, despite thousand papers and physically there is some contradiction in what how we understand it. so it's a model of many phenomena so for example here is a uh, uh, crystal grown with electrodeposition here it's the same thing but in motion uh, so there is an electrode and then copper uh, is deposited at the end, so it's more likely to, de to be deposited at more exposed points. There are other things, so this is an actual uh, stone I wanted, I have on my desk uh, in my office, but I forgot, well, I forgot to bring it. I actually, Stefan Rode and I found it in the mountains. So it's, uh, it's not uh, some, uh, it's not some ancient plan uh, squeezed between two sheets of rock, it's rather Mangan manganese oxide uh, flowing between two limestone sheets uh, and again a very similar fractal shape uh, and this is uh, uh, well a Heller show cell so this is like what mathematicians do when no one is watching they they experiment some well they maybe uh, wanted to be clandestinely experimental physics so this is an experiment you can do at home you just should have two uh, liquids with different viscosity and you pump one and then uh, well you can re easily write Darcy's equation and all that and you see immediately that there is something which is ill posed and you create this sort of a fractal shape which is very reminiscent of the previous ones. Uh, so not all such shapes are similar so I've shown three different things which produce similar shapes there are some which are less fractal so this is actual uh, think uh, actual penicillin grown by Alexander Fleming and which you can see in the library in Edinburgh. Uh, or there are some which are more pointy, like the lightning mentioned at the beginning. So this is again I forgot to bring. So this is, uh, uh, this is what I have, have at home. It's a piece of plexiglass aba about that, that white. And uh, well, the government equipment was abused to sort of put a huge electric charge in the middle. And now uh, what it does, it burns through plexiglass uh, so that it from the electric becomes conducting material. And here it's, you it normally would get a three-dimensional figure, but here it's a two-dimensional because it's between two charged plates, so it spreads sideways. Uh, and uh, actually it's interesting, you can see this lightning figures also in nature. So I, uh, I, I used to have a picture that somewhere in Toronto, you, can, you could see one on a pavement for a while that it, it has burned through the through the concrete uh, and even you can see it on skins of people if they are struck by lightning. Uh, surprisingly many people survive but, but they have this, this sort of figure left for a while. So there are uh, two models which were proposed uh, to treat this and they're quite easy. So one uh, was pr proposed, it's called diffusion limited aggregation. So you aggregate a crystal, but uh, probabilities how you go, uh, in which direction you go, they are governed by diffusion. And then sometime later, uh, uh, it was generalized to what's called electric breakdown model. Uh, and that, that was like 40 years ago. Uh, well, approximately as Uber is old today. <laughs> and uh, uh, it's, it's really interesting that from mathematicians viewpoint, there is but one theorem by Harry Keston. And physically, uh, you can find many papers with contradictory conclusions. Uh, so uh, uh, what is uh, the DLA model? Uh, I think actually who, who has seen this model before DLA? Uber, you have seen, you, you wrote a paper about it. <laughs> 
Yeah, so it's, uh, so it's, it's very easy. You uh, start with one particle, and then you set another particle from infinity by random walk, if you are in a lattice, or by Brownian motion until it hits the first one. And if it hits, it sticks. So the reasoning uh, in this first paper was that they were actually discussing some aggregates on the Teflon walls of diesel engines, and not, 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 nothing sticks to Teflon, but if something stuck to Teflon, then you can stick to this particle, and then you can stick to the particle which was stuck to this particle, and so on. And they move randomly, so you attach the second one. Uh, uh, it's equally probable to be attached to four different places. Now you have six different places to attach, so it's already not equally probable, and so on, so on. You grow, 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 and each time it's governed by harmonic measure. So here's an animation. So I once gave a popular talk uh, to school children what, uh, what I do for a living, uh, and so hence the animation is in Russian. So you, you start this random walk, uh, and uh, uh, to speed up calculations, you needn't start it from infinity. Essentially, you can start it from twice the radius of aggregate and would be good enough. And usually people start simultaneously several of them, and then it will, it will become, uh, it will start growing much and much faster. Uh, and uh, you see already, uh, well, at this stage, it's clear that there are some places which are in the fjords where you are very unlikely to stick a particle, and you are more likely to stick at the spikes. So we get this sort of a coral-shaped or fractal-shaped figure. Uh, and uh, here it's done on a square lattice, but obviously you can do it on a plane with both size one. Uh, and it was a question for a long time whether you get different pictures or not. And now. Uh, uh, here an example of uh, uh, two clusters. So this is what you do if you are not on the lattice. This is the picture when we have on the lattice. And, uh, and this is a recent paper, like three years ago, by Belayev and Grebenkov, where they analyze this phenomenon. It turns out that when you have large clusters, there is a definite lattice symmetry which appears. And maybe I'll say more about at the end. But fractally, it seems sort of uh, fairly similar figures. So here is a cluster with six million particles. Uh, and, uh, well, you can ask the questions how, how to study these things. Uh, so first I need to say a few words about how you attach particles. So you attach it proportion to probability that brown in motion or random walk lands at a given point. So this is one of the definition of harmonic measures. Uh, so other definitions are conformal map. You can map your domain. Well, here it's an outside of cluster to outside of a disk and take linear measure here and pull it back. You can do it with potential theory. So it's equilibrium measure for logarithmic potential or the measure which solves Dirichlet problem for Laplace, and so it's a ubiquitous uh, object in mathematics or physics. Uh, now, um, important thing is that how it behaves in the fjords and the spikes. So it's very easy with conformal map, uh, and it's, it's nice to have four different definitions because you can use the one more convenient in each situation. So if you have an angle of uh, pi over alpha degrees, uh, map z to the power of alpha, maps it to angle of 180. So here, harmonic measure would be proportional to length. So here, harmonic measure would be mapped back to z to the power 1 over alpha. So it means that if you have, for example, some fractal, and you have a uh, uh, fractal of radius r capital, and both radius are small, then if you have an angle, uh, really a polygon, then you would uh, have here harmonic measure to the power alpha. Now, angle can be between uh, 0 and 2 pi, so alpha is between 1 half and infinity, so it's some power of radius between 1 half and infinity. And this indeed is a theorem not only for polygons, it's a Berling's estimate, and uh, it's, uh, it's actually independently was proved by Carleman, Alfors, and Berling, and Berling was the last, but uh, his student Leonard Carlson decided to name it after his advisor this estimate. Uh, so uh, it's indeed for every shape uh, at most 1 over square root of uh, r if you, you take size 1 here. Uh, and uh, uh, that's the maximum. And this would be if you have a spike which is linear. And in the fjords, it, it is much less. So here there is a picture of how harmonic measure looks uh, outside in blue and inside a snowflake in red. So there are two harmonic measures actually pictured here viewed from for this snowflake curve viewed from inside and from outside. So if you go from outside, you are much more likely to end up at these exposed places rather than at the bottom of the fjords. Uh, there is a non-trivial theorem uh, by Nick Makarov, uh, my advisor, which was quite unexpected even by physicists at the time, that uh, 
100% of harmonic measure lives on flat places. So uh, from the point of view of measure theory, almost surely you, you end up with a place where you have a straight angle. It sounds a bit illogical, but uh, the reasoning is that there is a lot of harmonic measured spikes, but there are not so many spikes. So they account for 0% of harmonic measure. There is uh, uh, many more deep points, but they have too little harmonic measure. And uh, indeed, for most, uh, uh, most of harmonic measure, lives at places where it's approximately 1 over r. Uh, and uh, moreover, it sort of has non-trivial fractal properties, but a little bit more about this later. Uh, well, uh, so what is the dielectric uh, uh, breakdown model? So it's a generalization of uh, uh, DLA. So that was the DLA picture. You land proportional to harmonic measures. Here you land proportional to some power of harmonic measures. So you take parameter eta. And you then proportional to eta to uh, omega to the power eta. Now you have to normalize so that it's uh, uh, probability sums up to one. And if you vary parameter eta, you get different models. So for example, eta equal one, it's Eden model, uh, it's Eden model uh, named after a British probabilist, uh, which means that you are equally likely to land at every available place. And this is close to this growth of uh, Fleming observed uh, for penicillin. For at equal 1, you get ZLA, and at equal 2 is closer to these lightning things we have seen. Now, uh, I just uh, briefly say that there are various models which, which seem to be equivalent. A nice one, particularly nice one, was uh, given by Hastings and Levitov, and it's vaguely related to Shamlovny revolution. So you can do this by composing uh, conformal maps with a bump. So you add bumps to the thing uh, in the first model, and here you just compose maps with the bumps so you end up with things uh, which look like circle with bumps. Uh, the only problem is here that uh, if you compose such maps and for the map the bump has fixed size delta, in the image it, it will have different size depending on where it lands. So it becomes more difficult to, to work with. But the nice observation here is that uh, effect of putting a bump of size delta uh, on the size of the configuration. If you measure it as a complex analyst by uh, capacity or the same thing by the derivative of the conform map at infinity, then derivative of this map, it's easy to calculate, at infinity is 1 minus constant delta squared. So capacity each time when you compose with a map like that is changed by delta squared. And that we will use later. You can also prove it for the original model. Then we will use later to show that it's, it's, uh, uh, it, it, can be, it can simplify accounting. That when you add object of harmonic measure omega, then it changes the size of the aggregate by omega squared. Now, what kind of questions you can ask? Well, you can ask a question. Mm, what is the value of dimension rho? So uh, strictly speaking, uh, this thing mm, a priori doesn't have dimension. You can define uh, lower and upper rate of growth, lower and upper dimension. So uh, if, if you drop all the limits, you can think that the radius of the aggregate is number of particle to some power beta. Or the same thing is that the number of particle is uh, radius to some power rho, where rho is reciprocal of beta. And rho plays the role of dimensions between 1 and 2. So the question one can ask, is it a non fractal? Is it strictly between 1 and 2? Uh, is it a self-similar fractal? Uh, do, does it look like uh, most things we, we like to study, like easing model clusters, which are honestly self-similar? And uh, uh, the main theorem in mathematics I mentioned is a famous result due to Harry Keston, which, which is very elegant and very short. And he says the dimension is at least 3 over 2. So to prove this, you need to show that it doesn't grow very, very fast. Uh, and the proof goes like that. Uh, suppose that this is the radius. How can I increase the radius? I have to land at the furthermost point. Now, what is the probability to land at this point? It's omega harmonic measure at this point. But by Berlin, we know that omega is one, no more than 1 over square root of r. Uh, so uh, probability to increase at a given step our radius is no more than r to the power minus sigma, where sigma is some number bigger than 1 half. So expectation that we increase the radius is no more than r to the power of sigma, minus sigma, sigma bigger than 1 half. Now let's do some calculation for simplicity. Assume that radius grows uh, as uh, time to the power beta. Then time to the power beta, its derivative is time to the power beta minus 1. 
And that should be no more by this inequality time to the power minus beta sigma, because it's r to the power minus sigma, so r is theta tau to the power of beta. So we get this inequality, beta minus 1 is no more than minus beta sigma. Uh, well, we reduce it to this, and we get that beta is no more than 2 thirds, and the reciprocal rho is at least 3 halves. No, not the reciprocal, well, the reciprocal rho is at least 3 halves. So this is a, a very nice calculation. So he, I think he had a paper either in Physica D or in PRL uh, where he did essentially this thing. Then uh, it took some time to convert it into a mathematical statement because a priori you might have not one furthermost point, but like big number which touch the circle. And then you have to do some accounting. And uh, it came handy to evaluate how many such points you have. So you actually count self-avoiding walks. Uh, but, um, that's, that's a beautiful result, and in the modern, when, when it appeared at the moment 30 years ago, we thought that, well, in no time we'll show that it's a dimension smaller than 2, and it's an honest fractal, and perhaps a self-similar one, etc., etc. So, it hasn't happened so far. Uh, so, what uh, we, will, uh, we were able to do, we were able to do the same estimate for the electric breakdown model, or well, similar estimate. And we were able to prove it with a new proof. So we, we, got a, we tried to prove something else, but we just got a second proof of this one. We screwed up. Uh, but uh, also, we had some physical ideas what is actually going on, which I'll say at the end. And to present the second proof, I need to say a few things about spikes and fjords. So this is, again, uh, going back to Mandelbrot. Uh, uh, if you have a fractal, there is this thing called multifractal analysis, where uh, you study a continuum of parameters. So you study, you take the set F alpha, which is the set of Z, where harmonic measure behaves as if there is an angle pi over alpha, where harmonic measure is approximately r to the power alpha. Of course, if you work in math department, you should put here uh, three quantifiers like lim sup, lim inf, infimum supremum, because for a given point, normally if you take a random point in the snowflake, it will oscillate this angle alpha between big and small. But we all know, like for, from Gibbs measures, that uh, uh, there will be a lot of points with a given alpha, it's just some Gibbs measure, it's, it's support. Uh, so I, I will just stick with this, with this thing. And multifractal spectrum is defined as f of alpha, for the dimension of uh, this set. So it's normally some function like that. And there is a very nice conjecture due to Brian Ankelson, John Scratzer, and Makarov that if you take not snowflakes or DLAs, but all, all the planar domains, and you take supremum of f of alpha for harmonic measure, it will be exactly 2 minus 1 over alpha. It's, it's a pure numerological conjecture. Uh, so it's, it's, it's kind of like Babylonian mathematics, 360 degrees, because the sun you can fit that many times across the sky. Uh, but if it holds, uh, it uh, gives very nice answers to several important questions in mathematics. But we are very, very far. And anyway, that's not, not, uh, not uh, the, the talk. So what can we say about this f of alpha? So I uh, instead prefer to study another one, which is tau. Uh, which is uh, related to f of alpha by Legendre transform. And tau uh, is minus logarithm uh, uh, of the partition function, which is sum of omega to the power of p. It's quite logical to consider this function because we are working with the dielectric breakdown model where it enters as a normalization. So you take, uh, uh, for a p, you take this sum, you take logarithm, and then it's very easy to see that if you change p by Jensen's inequality, you get a concave function. Now, it's also easy to see that the asymptotical line to it will be given exactly to the power sigma, which is the maximal concentration of harmonic measure. Because if you take very large p, only the maximal terms remain important. So this p, which is uh, at most one half by, uh, at least one half by, uh, by Berling's theorem, will be important. And the Makarov theorem says that, uh, so I, uh, that uh, tau of 1 is 0. And tau prime of 1 is 1. And tau is no more than p minus 1. So there is this tangent line. So this is uh, some exercise uh, to see that this indeed release to the Hausdorff dimension of the measure omega. So this is what we know about this graph. Also, there is a conjecture what is exactly the formula, but we cannot prove it. Uh, for, for not for DLA, but the maximal one. Uh, so uh, this slide, maybe I don't go through. It's, uh, I, I will just present another proof later. This is our proof for DBM. The proof for DBM is more difficult because you have to divide by sum of omega to the power eta. So you have to estimate this thing. 
And here we use some strong form of Makarov's result in the discrete setting. As I said, that uh, most omegas, 99% of them, they behave like 1 over r, like it's a linear measure, and that can be used to estimate it. And, uh, well, uh, this is the result. So the result is the dimension for the electric breakdown model is 2 minus eta over 2. So essentially what, uh, what you see is that uh, if you have uh, uh, dimension, which can be at most 2, uh, and you have eta, then basically we have, uh, uh, we have an estimate which goes like that, that this is the dimension is what is at least this. So we know that dimension is somewhere here. So this estimate is already useless because we have a connected set that has dimension at least 1, but up to this you get a non-trivial estimate. Now, uh, 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 let me, what I want to do, I want to present an alternative proof of Keston's estimate, which touches upon uh, some physics papers by House and uh, some mathematics papers by Lawler. Uh, so what we do, we don't uh, track the radius of the thing. We track the capacity of the thing, which is, uh, which is uh, comparable to logarithm of the radius. And the thing is that, that it's difficult to see when the radius increases because you need to add uh, the tips. But uh, capacity is always increases whenever you add something. And we know that if you add place it at a place of harmonic measure omega, it increases by omega squared. That was this calculation for a conformal map. So basically, uh, capacity increases by omega squared. But what's the probability that we increase it at this place? It's the probability that we land at this place, which is omega in itself. So uh, with probability omega, we increase it by omega squared. So the average increase, expected increase, is sum of omega cube. You should sum over all particles, probability to land there, times the increase. So this partition function z of 3, sum of omega cube, this member of the multifractal spectra, is enters as the uh, uh, expected increase of our capacity. So if we mm, assume that uh, uh, our radius is t to the power 1 over rho, so the rho is dimension, uh, and we assume that z3 is rho r to the power minus tau 3, this spectrum we had. Then we, what we get uh, uh, that r to the power minus rho is t reciprocal. t reciprocal is, de is, def is uh, derivative of logarithm of t, no matter the power, which is z of 3, which is r to the power minus tau 3. So dimension is equal to tau of 3. Uh, so this uh, was unrigorously absorbed by Halsey. We can prove it rigorously. But what is really interesting is that uh, normally, if you work with the spectrums, the dimension would be the, uh, the intersection of this red graph with a vertical line. That would be the dimension. But in the particular case of DLA, it's actually also equal to tau of 3. So it's, it's equal to value of tau at 3, which is, which is sort of a weird thing. And then uh, what we do is that, uh, again, we choose sigma so that the maximum harmonic measure is r to the power minus sigma. But we don't use the Berlings estimate. Instead, we use that sigma is at least tau of a over a, which is a trivial thing. You just estimate sum of omega a uh, by, by maximum omega. And then you get, uh, so this was r to the power minus tau a. But this is at least r minus a sigma just because uh, uh, sigma is the maximum concentration. Uh, in fact, sigma is, is the limit of tau of A over A from concavity. So uh, we start like Keston. Rho is at least 1 plus sigma. But then we use this estimate that sigma maximum concentration is evaluated from below by tau of 3 over 3. Tau of 3 is equal to rho by this uh, house argument, which, which we made mathematical. So we get that rho is at least 1 plus rho over 3. So uh, rho times 1 minus 1 third is at least 1 is rho is at least 3 halves. So what I find here peculiar is this basically it's like Count von Munch-Gauss and that uh, we don't use any estimate of harmonic measure. Uh, we just uh, get the estimate as a byproduct. So the only thing which we use about harmonic measure is that if you add at a point, if you add a particle at a point with harmonic measure omega, then you increase your capacity or your size by omega squared. That's the only property we use. This actually property, Bertrand, which is basic for SLE, it allows SLE to work. And this, uh, this property is also related to Brown in motion going square of t away in time t. 
So this also, this is second proof of Keston's estimate we did. And uh, it also can be done for the dielectric breakdown model. So the, I don't want to really swarm you with formulas. I'll just show, show you the proof that I can do it and I can write it on a slide. Uh, so the only difference is that probability to attach, again, the change in capacity is omega squared, but probability to attach is omega to the power eta divided by sum of omega to the power eta. So you get this term, so you get z of not of 3, but 2 plus eta divided by normalization z of eta. Uh, so it's better not to read all these formulas, so I'll just... Uh, uh, show that uh, we arrive, instead of the older one, we arrive at a more complicated thing. So we arrive not at rho equal to tau of 3, but rho equal to tau of 2 plus eta minus tau of eta. And then we use the same estimate as, uh, as for Keston. And uh, the only difference is that here we have to use Makarov, that tau of eta is no more than eta minus 1. And this is the estimate we get. So essentially, uh, it's more elegant than uh, the Keston's thing and easier generalizes to, to the dielectric breakdown model. Mm, and here, again, there is this sort of recurring thing which, which has been around for like 40 years that uh, if you have a fractal measure, it's very nice to look at these moments and multifractal spectra. And in this particular case, also, we, we know the dimension by, by Nick Makarov, so that's, that helps a lot. Now, uh, what is next? Can we show that rho is b more than 3 halves or smaller than 2? Well, there is a big, uh, big problem here. And the big problem is that, uh, of course, uh, we advanced. For example, if uh, rho is not bigger than 3 halves, but exactly 3 halves, then our proof, the second proof, implies that tau of p is exactly equal to p over 2 for p more than 3. So we get some notion about this measure. But the main problem in all attempts before uh, was that our thing, it coalesces and it branches. So, for example, there is one way to attach a particle at the side k. But when we attach it here, at k prime, there are three possibilities where to attach. Now, again, when we attach here, there is again only one possibility. So, there are, at microscopic level, this thing branches and then coalesces, and that's completely ruins all the accounting we can think of. Uh, and uh, it's uh, not clear, uh, well, what to do with that. So we have two physical arguments. And the first physical argument is that, uh, well, rho is equal to 2. The dimension is actually equal to 2. So what we assume here, we assume here some strong self-similarity in this argument, which we cannot prove. We assume that it's an honest fractal that if I take uh, it is scale 1 million, take it as scale 1,000, I blow up, they look more or less the same. It's not actually true for the experiments we have seen so far, but it might be true in the limit when you have bigger and bigger things. And uh, what we do here that to uh, get rid of this coalescing and branching, and what we just do, we look not at harmonic measure for individual particles, but we cover it by cubes, say, r by r, so R capital is the size of aggregate and R small is the size of cube. And look at their harmonic measures. And look how harmonic measures change and how the similar sum for these big harmonic measures changes when we attach particle. So for example, if I attach particle here, how harmonic measure of omega L, uh, WL changes? Well, it changes, I have to subtract from it all the trajectories which would have reached omega WL, but could not reach when this particle is attached. So such trajectories, they have to land at this particle, and they have to go from here to here. So this probability is essentially harmonic measure to land here, and then green function between these two, which can be factored in the product of two harmonic measure here and here. So if these two cubes are fairly far away, uh, then it's harmonic measure to land here, another harmonic measure land here, so squared, and harmonic measure there. And the increase in this one, because it's now more exposed of manual particle, it's the sum of all the decreases. So the expected net effect on w to the power t, uh, the sum of w power t is, uh, first we have to put derivative to come from wt to just w, for which we wrote the increase. Then we write this omega squared times w, which we calculated. And probability to land is omega, so we change squared to the cube. So it's this sum. So we end up writing really this huge sum. You can resum and sum and resum. And uh, the thing which, which is uh, done here that it 
converts very nicely to sum of uh, multifractal spectrum from scale R capital to scale 1, multifractal spectrum from scale R capital to scale R small, and from scale R small to scale 1. So I do, so these are, these are so, so this, uh, this is uh, from scale uh, R capital to R small, this is from scale R capital to 1, and this is from scale uh, between, two, between scales R small and 1. So if you assume, if you assume for a second that all uh, spectra are the same, so you assume that it's an honest self-similar fractal, then you get, you get the same power loss only in powers of R or R small, and uh, in the end, it gives some information on tau at c plus 2, tau of t and rho. And it seems to indicate that rho is equal to 2. So what kind of information it gives? So again, uh, we are short on time. Mm, yeah, I may, may send you the slides if you, if you want. But essentially, what we get is that tau of 3, which is equal to rho, which we know, is equal to tau of t plus 2 minus tau of t. So if I take uh, tau of 3, so tau of 3 is basically the y coordinate of this vector from 0 to tau of 3. It's also the difference of tau of t plus 2 and tau of t. So if I take vector from tau of t to tau of t plus 2, it should be parallel to this one. But now function is concave, and this vector should have other endpoint on this function. And the only way is that both of these vectors are on this line. And then by Makarov, it should be line t minus 1. And then tau of 3 should be equal to 3 minus 1 to 2. So uh, this is, well, OK, how far it's from mathematical proof or from an honest argument, I can convince everyone. Well, it's, it's completely honest if we believe that it's a multiscale fractal. Unfortunately, we don't know. So basically, conclusion of this first argument, either it's not a multiscale fractal or it's a thing which has dimension 2. And the second argument is uh, e a bit even easier. Uh, so let's do the same multiscale thing. How long does it take to fill this square? If we fill it completely, our capacity increases by w squared. But also, if we just fill it half, it's also increased by comparable number. So uh, we want to fill the square. We need to add capacity w squared. But each time when we land at side omega, we add omega squared. So expected increase, uh, rescaled by the goal we want to achieve, is sum of omega cube, but only over this cube. It's the same sum we had that we increase by omega squared with probability omega, and uh, divided by w squared. So we write it like that. If we believe here that, uh, again, spectrum at different scale is the same, now it's, it's a much, it's sort of an easier thing than before. So here we only do it for one scale there, we had to do it from uh, scale 1 to 2, 2 to 3, and 1 to 3. Here we do it only uh, that it's the same for one scale. And then it's r to the power minus rho as, as, as we knew times w. So what happens? That probability uh, expected uh, time to fill uh, cube is uh, proportional to its harmonic measure. But you need a lot, a lot of particles to do it. So if you have two slots and one, you have probability one half, uh, you have expected time 200 to fill, and another you have expected time 100 to fill. But with very low probability, you dump something there, then the 100 one will win very, very fast. Because uh, the other one will be also around 100 by the law of large numbers. And then you already moved on, you created a much bigger DLA. So this essentially says that only the things which have the biggest harmonic measure survive. And that can happen in two circumstances. Either uh, you have a front where it's completely equidistributed, so Makarov without spikes. So it grows like a disc, like a mold uh, of penicillin in, in, the, in the Edinburgh library. Or uh, spikes kill everything. So it kind of relates to the previous one. OK, I think I, I, I'm not running over time. I'm just speaking too fast, but it's about to finish. So there is another thing that, again, one should study lattice versus continuous, because also I think that in lattice you have different fractal structure, because lattice indeed seems to be from the previous slide that spikes kill everything. Uh, in the paper of grebenkov belayev there are bigger pictures, and there they indeed kill everything. Uh, and we, I think we have now some idea how to, how to prove it. 
but uh, is the way fractal? It's quite likely not uh, in the sense that if you take it as a random compact set, but you can trace, for example, some curves like boundaries of, uh, uh, of some parts of aggregate or some branches or outer boundary, and those probably are fractal. And yeah, here maybe I will, so it's, it's interesting that like 40 years on, we still don't understand it. It probably, this is being the reason that it's not really self-similar in honest sense. And we, we are much com more comfortable studying systems which are self-similar. Okay, happy birthday. <laughs>I still did less than 40 minutes, yeah, but all right. you're doing great. Other questions? Yeah. Thank you for this nice talk. So what's known about the behavior of DLA under conformal transformations? I, of course, uh, if it's not a fractal, it won't be very pretty, but. So what is known is that uh, how Levitov model uh, is conformally invariant. So uh, it by setup. And it's known that if you do it carefully, there are more parameters to tweak because you need to do some smoothening because you, if you want to, these bulbs to have the same size, you need to multiply the size depending on concentration of harmonic yes. measure. So, so uh, it's known that it produces similar pictures. So I think that it looks like it is conformally invariant. But it does not to some extent, or covariant maybe, uh, but... Uh, mm, I don't know, you, you see, it's, it's really, so, so, so far, we, I think the biggest pictures are like about one billion particles we can have. Yeah. So if you, if you run a station like overnight for, for a week. Uh, and so far, they're still very different. It's not like, say, percolation clusters at size 100 by 100 and 1,000 by 1,000. They look remarkably the same. And here it seems that it still has a way to go to converge to something, uh, mm, but some conformal covariance is built in because it's defined with, co with, with, yeah. uh, with, with this thing. And, uh, but I, I really find it uh, kind of amazing that we can say very little, but it's the model you, you, re you, really, you really see in nature. And, and also another open question is, is it related to Heller Shaw or not? So Heller Shaw kind of has a built in distance factor, which sort of depends on ratio of viscosities. Here, the built in distance factor is the size of the particle. So it's, the pictures are remarkably similar, but uh, they come from very different things. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, okay, let's uh, thank Stas again. Thank you.